It's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160. He is Bob Pollock from the Extension Service. Joining us this morning on this Friday, our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And you can call Bob and ask him a question this morning, if you have one, about your lawn, your garden, your trees, your flowers, your shrubs, all of those lovely things. And the numbers four seven nine eleven sixty or three four nine nine two two seven. That's three four nine W C C S. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm I'm just lovely. I'm still puzzling over these robins that are fighting at my window <laughs> and making a mess. They I, haven't given up yet. They have not given up, and in fact they have scratched the glass. Really? That's how badly they want to get at that bird that's reflected in the window. It's them. Stupid birds. Um, so yeah, uh, varmints and critters are vexing, uh, here this year. And, um, a couple of them are, are starting to really get on my nerves, uh, especially the bunnies in the garden. They have wiped out my beans. My beans have been destroyed by these bunnies. Last year, they destroyed all of my, uh, beets. This year, they decided they're going for the beans. Uh, I've got the fence up. There are no ways to get around that fence or through that fence, so they must be jumping over it is the only thing I can figure. Um, but what can I do? Um, uh, people say that, you know, around the garden, uh, put human hair clippings, and, and that will keep the animals away. Um, trapping and, and, and poisons and things of that nature, poisons you get worried about because cats could wander through and uh, they could get it, kids could get it. So, you know, yeah, I, I sort of shy away from that. Uh, but uh, varmint's taking care of your, your vegetable garden. It's not a good thing. No. It can cause, <clears throat> cause a lot of damage in a hurry. Yeah. And then, like with your beans, now you have to replant those beans. If you didn't have another But if I replant them, they come up, they're going to get at them anyway. Well, so it's fenced. Mm-hmm. And what kind of fence is it? Um, it's a wire mesh fence. Okay. Uh, it's anchored on the bottom, so you can't Ooh. get through. Wow. I mean, it's anchored every two feet. So, And you're sure it's rabbits that ate off the beans? Um, I'm assuming it's rabbits that ah, ate off the beans. Okay. Um, because the rabbits that I see around the yard are really fat. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe they ate something else. It's not else. deer stepping over, if that's your, yeah. your theory. Well, no, I'm not necessarily. I'm just trying to think through, because rabbits are pretty adept at the uh, Sneaking under the fence. I saw but, one last year that went through the fence like it wasn't even there. And, and yeah. it was like magic. So when you said it was anchored down, it's that's anchored, another yeah. deterrent. Sometimes we'll even bury the bottom of the fence. I, that's done, too. I did um, that, too. Just bottom a, of the fence is buried, and it's anchored. Okay. Well, then they can't, shouldn't be able to easily sneak under unless it was a, a baby one. That somehow found a little gap or something and was wow. hungry. <laughs> uh. <laughs> as much as it's eaten, it's not getting back out <laughs> because it's and, uh, too big now. And, and, of course, that should, you know, with it being anchored at the bottom and everything, um, you should be able to see where they bent the wire or, you know, snuck under um, or, or moved that fence. And if it's groundhogs, then you would also see yeah, where they went through they would make a big and, mess. and anchoring the bottom goes a long way to help prevent that yeah um but the beans were just could you see the stem of the beans yeah i mean okay the stem was there and it would the top was gone there's that okay. much left there's an inch right. left above the ground well you have a friend <laughs> i wouldn't use the word friend <laughs> um i also I don't noticed... know if chipmunks would do that or not i counted yesterday there were uh 16 squirrels at the uh, oak tree down in the, or the maple tree down in the middle of the yard. They love those little helicopters. Uh, so there were 16 of them just prancing around. Well, there, there's, yeah, that's probably but, okay to yeah, have they, them eating the helicopters yeah. because there's <laughs> probably more than enough seed made. Uh, Squirrels don't get after the, uh, the beans, though. No, they usually do not no. go after no. beans. So, but vine I, I think control. you need to set up a chair. Um, yeah. Yeah, a chair beside your garden. Uh huh. And just sit there. Yeah. With the twenty-two. Yeah. <laughs> that could you could do that too. 
All right. So uh, those are those are my problems with the garden or, this year. Everything or, else seems or to be a shotgun. Right. Or, are plants in gardens a little bit behind because of the cool weather? I would say yes. Uh huh. Yeah, things have been a little bit slow to take and to get going. Um, you know, we haven't had any really really warm temperatures for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. We get a couple days and then we go back. Uh, and still having cooler nights, and so that slows things down. Usually once we get under, you know, right around 50s and below, most things aren't going to continue to grow. When we mm-hmm. when we stay at 60 or 65 at night, then things will continue to, you know, even though it's dark, um, they'll continue to function more. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll see see the growth, see the changes, see the fruit and vegetable development. Is that going to harm the yield in the end? No, it shouldn't harm the yield. It just slows everything up. Uh-huh. Things don't progress as, as quickly as what they might otherwise do. We're pretty much expecting frost to start now yeah. in July. <laughs> so in that way, it would be harmed. Yeah, these I mean, 50s mornings are, you know, and I'm sure in some spots it dips down into the 40s. Yeah, but we do talk yeah. about cool weather plants, broccolis right. and, and things of that nature. Which, which is good for those yet. Yeah. Because usually by June, you know, once we get into the middle of June, if, if those things aren't maturing, then we run into problems with those cool season mm-hmm. crops. They, they want to start to bolt, which means they send up a flower stalk. Yeah. And so then that, you know, or the, um, the flowers will start to come out, you know, and then that's mm-hmm. not what we want. But the tomatoes, um, they, they look really, really healthy. Yeah. But they're not as big as one would expect that they would be. The stocks aren't and, as big right now as, as normally they would be for the second week of June. Yeah, and, and growth. So you can get shorter plants. And oftentimes earlier planted uh, plants, you know, like sweet corn, for example, uh, you know, you have the same variety, just one planted early mm-hmm. um, and one planted now, let's say. Yeah, you stagger um, And the growth, the height that those plants will get will be they might be a, a foot or two different. Yeah. Um, but we have we may, don't have as much light. We don't have as long a days early. We have cooler soils. So they don't tend to stretch as much between uh, the nodes. Um, so they don't stretch and get as tall as they can mm-hmm. or able to. Um, and then in, when it's warmer and the days are longer, um, then they'll tend to put on more growth uh, and be taller they won't necessarily make a – they can make a larger ear, yeah. um, not a lot larger, but still can be a little bit larger. That one of the big advantages is that later planted corn, uh, the, the ear will be higher off the ground, so it's easier to pick. You don't have to bend over as far. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I did note um, – I don't know where I was going with that, so we'll move along. <laughs> uh, but we're talking gardens here this morning. If you have a question for Bob, you can call and ask him, 479-1160 or 349 WCCS. That's 349-9227. People get concerned at this time of the year about their tomato plants and, and the possibility of blossom rot, and they're wondering, okay, if it's been cool and a little bit wet here in this springtime, does that mean that rot is going to come along and uh, that I should be treating right now? my tomato plants so should i be spraying them now and of course a lot of times we're just you know the plants there it hasn't started to flower yet um, and there's no fruit on there so we're just growing a plant at this point in many cases um, and so we don't need to just need to keep our eye on it uh-huh. um, we can get like early blight uh, will can start now and we'll start to see that on some of the lower leaves usually Mm-hmm. And again, that's a fungus that comes from spores. Those spores can overwinter in the garden and around, and then they'll infect those leaves. Um, and early, you know, if the plant's healthy, you're getting good growth, um, you can just remove those leaves just to get that inoculum out of there once the once it started on, you see, you can see it on the leaves. Um, and there'll usually be kind of circular lesions that'll be on there. Yeah. Uh, but nothing to worry about. Late blight, um, which is the one that can take the whole crop out in a few days, mm-hmm. um, that's still way south. That yeah. moves in here on the uh, wind stream uh, when we have fronts that come through. 
Yeah. But early for that. Same thing with downy yeah. mildew. Here's a question for you from uh, Florence on I, I, is it Florence, Jake? Florence on Facebook. She wants to know this. I've been reading about hand pollinating blossoms from cucumbers and tomatoes. Does that help? Yes, it can help, uh-huh. especially if you're indoors. Now, if you're outdoors, uh, usually we get enough air movement that that pollination will happen on its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, that tends to be sometimes necessary in a structure. Um, so in a greenhouse, in a cold frame, uh, in a high tunnel, uh, where we're limiting the air movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we don't have fans and can't roll the sides up and all that, uh, then not having some movement in there can limit the amount of pollen that gets moved around. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, they'll actually uh, they actually have some tools <laughs> uh, that you can use that will say, what's the technique? Yeah, it's just it's like a, you can tap it. Um, they also make uh, vibrators that you can hold against that flower truss, and then that just shakes and, and moves the pollen. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use a little bit of air, um, you know, just like a a, uh, a blower, sure. but you don't want to overdo it with that. Um, just a little bit of air movement too will will help move that pollen around, uh, so that mm-hmm. you get better pollination. But there's enough pollen there; it's just not, yes, it's not blowing. Yes, out. it may not just be moving around enough to. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And if you don't have any bees um, or other insects that help with pollination. Uh, then that can help as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So Oftentimes we have those things around, uh, but there are cases where we don't, especially indoors, mm-hmm. um, and then we then we need a little bit of aid to get that done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for, for to Florence on Facebook uh, for asking that question, uh, and and we appreciate that. It's seven fifty six, almost out of time with Bob here. Uh, as we think about uh, things the, such as I, I've noticed maybe not as many hummingbirds around this year, but maybe that's just at my place. Maybe they don't like my stuff anymore. Um, but uh, uh, bees and and hummingbirds and other pollinators, um, are they as plentiful this year? Are there problems? Haven't heard. There, haven't heard, you know, one way or another. Okay. You know, I've seen pollinators out and around. Uh-huh. Uh, but... Weather, you know, definitely affects them. So, you know, cooler, cloudier, wet days, we're going to see less mm-hmm. of that activity. And, and nice sunny days, we're going to see more. Uh, and then we've got to have the flowers around, too. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So there you go. Uh, anything else you need to pass along to folks this morning? <laughs> hey, you can check out um, uh, extension.psu.edu. Mm-hmm. Um you can go on there, and you can always sign up for areas of interest, things you're interested in and want to know about, and when there's upcoming workshops or webinars, or uh, and those continue to, to happen weekly uh, on a variety of different subjects. Uh, but once you select areas where you can go on there and, and look for things, um, and announcements will come out, um, various webinars, a lot of those things are tailored to a, you know, a one-hour time slot, Mm -hmm. uh, things that can be covered in a reasonable amount of time um, on a variety of topics. Uh, So check that out. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Paul Pollack from the Extension Service. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160.